We both have families we were born into. But sometimes families change and we have to build our own. For me, our friendship binds us closer than blood ever could. For me too. I felt that way once. I felt there was nothing left to live for. I was tired and hurting and I just wanted it to end. What changed it for you? You did. Let's be clear, Xena the show is gay. Very gay. It's basically gay from start to end and it only gets gayer as the seasons go on. But there are some standout moments that I think deserve being called out. From the lighthearted moments to the dramatic and sexy, here is my list of Xena and Gabrielle's gayest moments. I'd love to hear what your personal top picks are in the comments. Is Xena all you think about? She Xena is my family. She's the most important thing in my life. Xena and I have a connection. It's stronger than either one of us. We're soulmates. We didn't, we didn't make it that way, it just is. I can see your heart lies with Xena, but I'll prove to you which one of us deserves your love. Let's start strong with the gay trilogy of the Rheingold, which is all about true love and the fact that Xena and Gabrielle are soulmates. When Xena runs off to the land of Norse to make right or wrong from long ago, fully expecting to die, Gabrielle naturally follows her. And on that journey, she meets a young Valkyrie, Brunhilde, who falls in love with her. In an attempt to protect Gabrielle from Odin, the Norse god, and to prove her love, Brunhilde turns herself into an eternal flame, which puts Gabrielle into a deep sleep. A sleeping beauty sleep, if you will. Meanwhile, Xena, working to undo her past mistakes, loses what she holds most dear, which is her memory of Gabrielle and the woman that Gabrielle helped her become. A year later, still without her memory, she is discovered by Beowulf, a friend, and he takes her back to the eternal flame in Gabrielle because, as her soulmate, she is the only one who can cross the flame. She does that. And how does one awaken their soulmate? Why? With a kiss, of course. But this is by no means the only kiss that we get in the show. There is also the marriage kiss, where Gabrielle weds Perticus for plot reasons, and Xena kisses her gal pal as a wedding gift, as you do. And then looks like she's positively destroyed by Gabrielle leaving her. Zena, I can't lose you again. Gabrielle will always be here. There is also the infamous quest kiss, where Xena dies, possesses Autolycus's body, and then decides that the best way to show Gabrielle that her soul is still with her is to go in for a kiss, much to Autolycus's surprise and mine. My baby gay brain exploded. And finally, the kiss of life in the finale A Friend in Need Part 2, where Xena is almost dead on Mount Fuji. Gabrielle reaches the Fountain of Life, and having no other way to get the water from there to Xena, holds the water in her mouth. And obviously, that requires tender lip-to-lip -lip contact to then pass the water from her mouth to Xena's. Speaking of A Friend in Need, while it was an atrocious ending to the series, it also gave us one of the shippiest declarations of the show. If I only had 30 seconds to live, this is how I'd want to live them, looking into your eyes. There is so little room for this to be interpreted as platonic that you'd need to do a hundred point turn in order to maneuver yourself out of this one. And why would you? I wish I'd known you were looking for a father. I'm not. Oh? Well, somebody clearly got the job. Yeah, Gabrielle. I would have paid to see that. When Xena gets pregnant, it's not clear how or who the father is. But on a show like Xena, the answer is not the obvious. It's the miraculous. Because she is pregnant by immaculate conception with the daughter who has the soul of her greatest enemy, Callisto, because Xena and Gabrielle were crucified and went to heaven, but also to hell, where Xena redeemed Callisto's soul because the reason Callisto was evil was because Xena destroyed her village and killed her family and friends back when she was a warlord. But that's all beside the point, because what matters is who's going to co-parent that child, and well, obviously, it's Gabrielle. And she looks rather smug about it. You and I have much in common. Of course we do. You're a mortal female with a lying tongue, savage tendencies, and a blonde girlfriend. If you want to seduce the fallen angel Lucifer to the dark side so he can take the throne in hell as the devil, then what better way to do that than to have a sexy dance with your girlfriend while dressed in skin-tight leather? I mean, that's what I would do if I wanted to save the world from unutterable darkness. 
When Gabrielle ends up on the menu of the friendly local cannibals and ends up in a raging river, Zena jumps in to save her and as hypothermia begins to take over and Gabrielle thinks she might just die, she has a very specific request. I don't want to be buried with the Amazons. I want to lie with you, with your family. What about your family? I love them. But I'm a part of you. I want it to be like that forever. Because, of course, why wouldn't you want to be buried next to your soulmate? Do you really believe that kind of love exists? It's what we all dream about, isn't it? Someone would look so deeply into our soul that they'd find something worth dying for. I couldn't actually pick a gayest moment from this episode because the whole thing is so gay in an already gay show. Is it the moment their eyes meet and Gabrielle has a moment? Is it when Zena shrinks into the shadows of her own balcony because seeing Gabrielle overwhelms her senses? Is it how Caesar already knows that he's lost Zena and jealously tries to get rid of Gabrielle? Or perhaps it's Gabrielle declaring, My life is empty, despite my success. I write about love, but I've never felt it before. Or is it this moment? When I'm with you, this emptiness that I have felt my entire life it's gone. Some things are worth dying for. It's not what your play was about. Being prepared to sacrifice all for love. For love. I'll love you forever. Don't touch her. Or maybe it's Gabrielle going to the fate's tapestry of time and destroying it because a world without Xena was not a world worth living. I mean, you choose. It's an embarrassment of riches. I couldn't finish out this list without mentioning the poem. With the sun setting over the ocean, with the satisfaction of an adventure done, Xena gives Gabrielle a poem written by Sappho of Lesbos to express how she feels because who better to put into words the love she has for her warrior bard. There's a moment when I look at you and no speech is left in me. My tongue breaks, then fire races under my skin and I tremble and grow pale for I am dying of such love or so it seems to me. <laughs> that wraps up what I think are the gayest moments on Xena Warrior Princess. Do you agree with my list? Let me know in the comments below. If you like this type of content, like, subscribe and turn on that notification bell. Until next time, lady lovers.